Good morning. It is the uh, 12th of October 2020 and uh, I have good news. The number of people dying in Delhi are receding. On uh, last Wednesday, 35 people died, 37 died on Thursday, 39 died on Friday, about 48 died on Saturday. But yesterday, only 29 people died because of uh, allegedly COVID-19. Uh, now, this is very important because uh, there will be a lot of noise that as winter approaches, cases will increase. But I doubt very much whether hospital admissions will increase uh, proportionately or whether more people will die because of COVID-19. The answer is simple. As I've been telling all these months, we have a younger population. Plus now we are more aware of this virus and we know how to tackle the virus. And I think the, uh, the blueprint should be the treatment given to the President of the United States of America, Mr. Donald Trump. The moment, or rather initially, in the initial few days of COVID-19, if confirmed to be positive, I would go for Remdesivir. And even before that, the new monoclonal antibodies, which I have also spoken about, I think the combination of uh, remdesivir and the monoclonal antibodies would be a terrific uh, combination against uh, the uh, viral replication. Because remember, the first week or the first 10 days of this disease is the period when the virus multiplies. So therefore, we need to give a medicine which uh, blocks the multiplication of this virus. If the disease persists in a few, unfortunate few, and uh, then we have the hyperimmune response and then the treatment becomes, uh, becomes much uh, different. Once that develops, once the patient becomes moderately severe COVID-19 or in fact severe COVID-19, then the antivirals will not work. And then we have uh, steroids which have been found in randomized trials to work or other drugs like JAK inhibitors or tocilizumab. However, the important thing is that uh, we now know how to treat this virus and therefore we are in a much better position as opposed to nine or ten months ago. And uh, I would follow the protocol which has been uh, provided to Donald Trump that we start with a cocktail of antibodies, synthetic antibodies and with remdesivir in a person with COVID-19. And I keep on harping on the treatment given to COVID uh, to Donald Trump because uh, Mr. Trump was, is 74 years old, is definitely overweight, despite these two uh, liabilities, despite these two weaknesses, he has uh, spectacularly been, uh, has bounced back and is back to work. And there are murmurs that because of the dexamethasone which was given to him, maybe he is uh, you know, he has uh, become a bit hyper, but I doubt very much a single or two injections of Decadron do not make a person think otherwise. So I would still stick with a combination of synthetic uh, antibiotics and uh, remdesivir. And I hope that the government of India is, is uh, rapidly clinching a deal with the companies that is uh, Regeneron and uh, Eli Lilly, which are making these uh, antibodies and which have already applied for emergency uh, authorization uh, with the FDA and I am quite certain that the authorization will be given by the FDA. The other thing which has to be kept in mind is that uh, there is finally almost let us consider an official acknowledgement that lockdowns are not the answer to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have uh, David, uh, a person who is uh, the envoy, the special envoy for COVID-19 of the uh, WHO, who has gone on record, he has given an interview to the Spectator magazine. This is an online interview, which is also present, should be present on YouTube, in which he has clearly said that the WHO does not think that a lockdown should be the primary approach to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. It is a method of uh, last resort it should be only considered when nothing else is working and uh, it should give you time to regroup 
to recalibrate and reorganize your approach to the COVID-19 and give uh, some relief to the exhausted health workers. Now, these words are music to my ears because I have been saying this repeatedly for the past seven months. In fact, in March of this uh, year, I had given an in interview, which is also on uh, YouTube. It is on record wherein I had said emphatically and very forcefully that a sledgehammer lockdown would serve no purpose. It would only damage our economy. If one has to do a lockdown, it has to be selective, it has to be localized, it has to be uh, fine-tuned. You just cannot shut down the entire economy of the country. That would be hazardous. And I think the official report is that our GDP will contract from 11 to 15 percent. And that, I think, would be an underestimate. I'm sure that the GDP has crashed by about 20 percent already. And it is for you all to see. You already know that restaurants are not working, pubs are not working, businesses are not working. Most businesses have collapsed across the world. And this is serious news. So when the envoy for the WHO says that uh, next year, by next year, poverty would be doubled, child malnutrition would be doubled, I am not surprised. I am, in fact, certain that poverty would uh, not only double, but would probably be, uh, probably be tripled. And uh, child malnutrition would be the next uh, pandemic across the globe because of what has been done. It is clear that the poor will become poorer and the middle class will become poor at this rate. And I am very surprised that the British public has, uh, has absorbed the bizarre graph which was presented by their chief medical advisor, that is Sir Patrick Valence, and in which he showed last month that by October 13th or 14th, which is uh, today, that by now there would be almost 50,000 cases per day in the United Kingdom, and by November there would be 200 deaths per day in the United Kingdom. Nothing of that sort has happened. We know that almost around just about 12 to 13,000 cases are developing in the UK per day, and the deaths are very few in the United Kingdom. The CDC has come up with the excellent figures. Now, you must read these figures yourself or listen to me very carefully. Till the age of 20 years, the infection fatality rate is just 0.003%. Between 20 and 50 years, the infection fatality rate is 0.02%. And from 50 to 70 years, the infection fatality rate is half a percent. And above the age of 70 years, the infection fatality rate goes up to 5%. So for people below the age of 70 years, the fatality is extremely low, much lower than the fatality which was seen in the flu epidemics of 1957 and 1968. And those of you who know who are of my generation would remember that despite the fact that the Hong Kong flu had an infection fatality rate of about 05 to 0.7%, Woodstock still took place in 1969. So there was no lockdown then, and despite what uh, is being urged by Patrick Valence, there should not be any sledgehammer lockdowns now. What can be done is that we can have selective lockdowns or local reactions. But when I say, and I have been saying this repeatedly, that do not fear this pandemic, I agree. I, I, I concede that this is a brand new virus which we have never faced before. The human race has never confronted this sort of a virus earlier. But we have to learn to live with it. We have to coexist with it. And we have to have our wits with us. This virus is going to be around us for the next five or ten years with a vaccine or without a vaccine. And I don't place all my eggs uh, in the vaccine basket. I, I, I would rely more on uh, basic stuff like personal hygiene, washing hands as often as possible, wearing a mask in a crowded place, despite the fact that the CD has now said that 70 to 80 percent of infections have taken place in people who were wearing masks. But still, in a crowded place and especially in an intensive care setting or in a hospital setting, one must wear a mask and in a hospital, one must wear an N95 mask. 
So apart from washing hands frequently, wearing a mask in crowded places, one must avoid crowded places and maintain some social distancing between people, especially with strangers or non-family members. Now, which brings me to the fact, and this again I have told you earlier also, that do not rely too much on this vaccine, which is about to be uh, provided to us in the next few months, because humanity has other immunity against this virus, and this is the T-cell variety. We have antibodies. Antibodies have been seen across countries in about 10 to 15 to 20 to almost 50 percent of the population. But apart from antibodies, we also have what are called T cells. Now, we have two kinds of uh, immunity. I remember them as tuberculosis or TB. T for T cells, B for B cells. B make the antibodies of the IgG and the IgM variety. And uh, the IgM variety developed earlier, so this can be remembered as my god. My is IgM and G comes in later, that is the IgG antibodies. Now, apart from antibodies, we also have T cells. That is very important. Now, the remarkable thing is that there is adequate data which has been published in, in serious journals like The Cell and Nature across uh, from different countries which have shown that people who have not been infected by the Chinese virus or who have been just exposed to infected people have T cells which are reactive against the Chinese virus. The Singaporeans have published a data in Nature in August which has shown and uh, this has to be listened very carefully. They have shown that in people who were infected with the SARS virus in 2002, T cells have lasted against the SARS virus for 17 years. These T cells did not vanish in two years or one year or in six months. The T cells against the SARS virus have lasted for 17 long years. The same paper tells us that people who have not been infected by SARS and who have not been infected by the Chinese virus, that is SARS-CoV-2, these people also have T cells which react and which can protect us from the Chinese virus. So this is the paper from Singapore. There is a paper from Germany which has also been published and which says that in people who are infected with COVID-19, almost 83% of such people, of infected people, develop T cells. But apart from this, in people who are not infected by COVID-19, who have not been infected by the Chinese virus, almost 34% have T cells active against the Chinese virus. Now, how did they find this? They found this by the fact that they had uh, blood samples of blood donors who had donated blood before 2017. And in them and in these blood samples, they found that there were T cells and these T cells were reactive against the COVID-19 virus. Now, T cells are not as simple to detect as antibodies. The process is slightly more complex and more expensive. So therefore, we have to rely on this data, which is being published. So I have already mentioned the Singapore paper. I have mentioned the, uh, the German paper from Berlin. And then we have the paper from Karolinska Institute Stockholm from Sweden, which has shown very elegantly that people have T cells, and these are people who have not been infected by COVID-19. And the nice thing is that T cells against the Chinese virus are present, are present in people who are twice as many as people who are infected with uh, COVID-19 and who have antibodies against the COVID-19. I will repeat this, that the number of people who carry T cells against the Chinese virus are twice as many as people who have antibodies against the COVID-19 or the Chinese virus. So now we know that we have T cells, a considerable amount, number of people in the general population who though have not been infected uh, by COVID-19 do have immunity against COVID-19. And this has been shown by papers also published from North Carolina, the United States, and from the University College Hospital London, they have also shown that people not infected by COVID-19 carry or harbor T cells 
which react against COVID-19 as also react against the common coronavirus colds. So what they are saying, these papers are uh, implying is that if a person has had a common cold by the coronaviruses, the, uh, the, uh, the mild coronaviruses, then they will have T cells in their bodies which will also prevent infection by the Chinese virus. Now this is very important to remember and of course and I, I agree as I have agreed a little while back that this is a brand new virus. We have never come across this virus and I have, I may be uh, blacklisted for this. I sometimes feel very strongly depending upon the data which is already published in major journals like journal like uh, nature cell and nature cell and also science that man has the ability to make uh, synthetic viruses to make uh, hybrid viruses which are more infective than the viruses present in nature these papers have been published and I have provided links to these papers in my videos uh, which I have made earlier. What I am suggesting very strongly is that because this virus does not match the SARS-1 virus, I have very very strong suspicions that this virus may have been deliberately made or, or accidentally made in a laboratory. And of course, we all know that the uh, infamous laboratory concerned is the Wuhan uh, Virus Institute. And we also know that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was uh, funded by the Americans, especially the National Institute of Health uh, present in the United States of America. So I will uh, end this talk by saying or by reminding you that finally the WHO itself has officially stated that the best way of tackling the COVID-19 pandemic is not by a lockdown. A lockdown should be the last resort. It should be done at a time when all other avenues have been exhausted. It will be a time to regroup and to reorganize and uh, to, to reorganize the hospitals and to reorganize the uh, infrastructure to tackle the uh, pandemic. So despite the fact that there will be cases in the coming winter, there will be an increase in cases in winter across the world, these will not be rising exponentially and more important, uh, the younger population will be infected and despite the fact that the younger population will be infected, deaths and hospitalization will be much, much lower than in the beginning of the pandemic. With this, I will leave you. If you have liked this video, please do subscribe, please do share this video and uh, press the bell icon because what I say is would be quite uh, different from the, uh, the uh, mainstream media and as I said in my first video, I think in the first week of May, my videos will be completely different not only from the mainstream media but also from uh, the media which uh, pretends to call itself the uh, alternate media. So have a good Monday. Thank you very much for listening to me.